Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to Wood by Wright 2. Today we are working on assembling the footboard of the bed. I'm going to be skipping assembling the headboard at this point because they're basically the exact same. So we're going to go through all the joinery in this. Massive tenons, massive mortises. How do you actually work with dimensioning down lumber and shaping these large things together? So let's dive in and take a look at this build. Today we're going to be working on the legs, and these are going to be laminated together. Each of these boards are about four inches wide by about an inch and a half thick. And when we laminate them together, that will give us legs that are about three inches by about four inches. But before we do any of that, we need to cut them all down. We had these all dimensioned in the last video, but uh, the legs are going to need one step more. And again, we get to use the buck saw, one of my favorites for cutting off things at a uh, rough amount, especially for thick amounts like this. It's just a, a fast and easy saw to work with. I'll put glue on both sides and put a copious amount on there, smear them together, make sure that I get glue on all surfaces, and allow the glue to squeeze out on the edge. That way I can know I have a good uh, good amount of glue sticking all the way around. I'm going to be using a lot of screw clamps. Several of them are all wooden screw and some of them are steel screw. I have a, a fairly large collection of them, although I could always use more. And I think I ran out on this one. I think I used all of them when I did all four legs. And uh, they're a lot of fun to use though, especially the wooden screws. You'd be amazed at how much pressure you can put on those. After letting them sit overnight, it's time to actually start dimensioning them. So I'm going to pick one edge and run down it. I can use the scrub plane to take off anything that's very high and bring it into a relative uh, square to the first face. Once I get it fairly close to the scrub plane, then I'm going to grab my number six and smooth it out. And the number six will help start flattening it and bring it as close to true as I can. Again, I'll be checking with the square against the side and then winding sticks and straight edge. And I'll go back and forth with these, making sure that I get a really nice edge, um, particularly if that's going to be one of my two reference edge or faces. Once that's done, we can then smooth it all out. Now grab my smoothing plane and just take a few passes off of each side, making sure that everything is nice and clean. I'm getting rid of any marks or any nicks or anything that were in there from the rough work on them and uh, making it very happy. Then I'm just going to do a final check, make sure that everything is exactly the way I need it, and then do any leveling one way or the other. Sometimes that just means one or two passes with the plane to bring it into true so that there's no more twist. And that's uh, about it for the, uh, the the flattening, or the dimensioning. Um, yeah, <laughs> be amazed what you can do with winding sticks. Not only do they tell you wind, but they're also a good straight edge and uh, a fantastic tool to have for something so simple. I have a couple of videos on making this if you want to see it. Next thing I want to do is cut the leg to length, and I left it long so I can cut a little bit off of both ends. And so I draw a line all the way around, making sure that the square on my fence is referencing either the reference edge or the reference face of it, and not the other two faces. This way I know I get a good perimeter line all the way around. And I will drop down to one knee so that I can focus on just cutting down the line on my side. And you get a fairly close edge. Uh, I could have done a little bit more, but I was pushing a little bit harder than I should have, and that allows the, uh, the saw to wander a bit in the cut, but not too bad. Making sure you label every leg so that you know which one goes where. There's nothing worse than drilling the hole in the wrong place. Speaking of which, let's start working on the tenons between the stretchers that go between the legs. These are fairly large tenons, about five inches by um, about four and a half inches long, um, a half inch wide. First thing I want to do is mark out where the shoulder of the tenon will be all the way around the board. The shoulder is the important thing, not the length of the tenon, because these are through tenons and they will stick out the end, and I'm going to leave them all long. On one side, I'm going to cut it in a one inch mark, and the other side, a, a quarter inch. And this will alleviate some space so that when the tenon goes through the leg at the top, it doesn't leave the top of the leg weak. Rip it down with a tenon saw, get it really close, and then I have a thin panel saw that I can finish it up and get it right down to that line. You'll see that this particular one that I was shooting the video on is a really curly white oak, and that causes a lot of issues. But I wanted to show the worst one I had um, in the video. So yeah, you get to see the, the most fun I could possibly have. A lot of curly oak. Beautiful, though, when it's done. Once we have the cheek and tenon on the ends of the tenon done, now we need to cut it down to thickness. I don't want it to be the full th three quarter inch wide. I want to have a nice shoulder um, all the way around. And so this means I have to take off an eighth inch on either side of the tenon. 
I'm going to show two different ways of doing it. Number one, uh, with the chisel. So rather than sawing it down, if that's something that really scares you, you can chisel it out. And I'm going to chisel back to the shoulder, getting that nice and clean, until I'm right at my line all the way along that shoulder. And you can check that with a straight edge or a square, making sure that it goes from line to line on either side, and you get a nice straight edge. Then I'm going to go around the perimeter and just chop it in just a little bit. You can see how the chisel is aiming up. I don't want to be aiming down. I want the split, if anywhere, to go up running around the perimeter, and this will just give me an eyeball edge of exactly how deep this tenon needs to be. And I am just doing it right into the line, a, a tiny bit in. I'm not going a, a long ways in. Once I get that, I'm going to come up from my line a little ways. So if I have an eighth inch to go down, I need to go down a sixteenth of an inch and then start sliding across, slicing this off and taking the majority off. And you can see how curly this oak is, making it a lot of fun. I'll grab a shoulder plane or something to get close to the shoulder on this and clean that up right down to the side so that I'm right at my line on both sides and still getting a nice curl all the way across the board. Now that I have the, the shoulder cleaned out, we can grab a regular plane and clean out the rest of the face on this tenon. Um, because the space by the shoulder is clean, uh, this, the plane can do the rest of it. It doesn't have to get right up next to the shoulder now. And we can just use this to take everything down to those lines that we put in around the edge. Check it with the square, go back and forth, and make sure that you have a nice flat surface all the way across. And when you can run it all the way down in both directions and then corner to corner, make sure there's no twist, uh, you'll know that your tenon is true and clean and ready to go in. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will be inside the joint and covered in glue, but a little bit of work it makes it fun. Now for the other one, I'm going to show you how to cut it with a saw. And in this case, I'm using a uh, continental style bow saw. And this is a fairly common um, saw where we would use back saws in America and England. Most of the continental Europe um, used bow saws for their joinery saws. And they allow you to cut much deeper than a back saw will. I could have used a Japanese saw, I could have used um, a larger panel saw or a, uh, a hand saw of some kind, but these are a lot of fun and if you have one, uh, they're, they're actually rather enjoyable to use. Between the two methods, I found that chiseling was a little bit faster, but not by a whole lot. And uh, each one had its fun, I probably did about half the tenons one way and half the tenons the other way. Then one by one, because this is so long, I have to have it at an angle, so I'm constantly flipping it over so that I can have access to it. And because it's so long, I, I couldn't stand it up vertically and get all the way down to the shoulder. I kept running into the vent up above me. And if you listen carefully on the other, you'll actually hear the saw hitting the vent as it goes all the way up. Then we need to cut in the shoulder and get it ready to pop out. If I was thinking ahead of time, I probably would have cut the shoulder before um, cutting down the cheek. And because I had it fairly close, it was about a half inch or so away, I could just pop out the rest, knowing that the grain was okay enough to, to get that distance. Uh, it was still a little bit wild and squirrely, but it, it cleans up pretty quickly. Then I can bring in the shoulder plane, clean it up right next to the shoulder because we had that all rough. And in this case, the, the saw twisted a little bit at a couple high spots, and so I could bring in a plane and smooth those out. Basically, just like we did on the other side. Um, a fairly simple process, takes a little bit of time, as long as you take it step by step, it is surprisingly fun and enjoyable to get. Next thing we want to do is lay out the mortises. I can lay these out according to the plans, but in this case I laid out the first one, and then I want to transfer all those marks over to the second one. The only thing that's important is that these two line up. It doesn't matter that they match the plans as long as they match up exactly between the two. You want them to be at the exact height up from the bottom of the leg. And then once I have that in, then I can lay out the length of the tenon and the width of the mortise. The width of the mortise is dependent on the chisel. And then I can set my mortise engage to, to the marks that are the width of the chisel. I find it easier to mark out the width of the chisel on the board and then set the mortise engage up to those two marks that were made. That's a lot easier than trying to put the chisel up against the mortise engage. And then we need to transfer those lines around from one face of the board to the other face of the board so that the tenon will come out the other side in the exact same place. And we can do that by just putting a light nick in the corner, putting the square up against it, and then putting a light nick in the opposite side. And then that allows us to carry it all the way around and put in the top and bottom of the mortise with an actual cut. Then put in the width of the mortise or the, the thickness of the mortise, which is a half inch at this time. And now the boring part. Oh yes, the boring part. 
everybody's favorite. <laughs> I don't actually drill out a lot of mortises. Um, I usually save that for the big ones. And in this case, this is four inches deep. Um, and it's only a half inch wide, which means a whole bunch of holes. And it takes a long time to drill out each one. Each, each mortise, I think I drilled 10 holes from either side. So each mortise was 20 um, holes being bored, which takes a long time with a brace and bit. Um, but in this case, it saved a little bit of time from just chopping it out because chopping down two inches from either side takes a lot of time. Um, and in this case, because it's so much bigger, I prefer to bore them. If I was only going down two inches, then I'm just going to hit them with a the chisel. So I can bore the holes from one side, then turn it around and bore the holes from the other side, and I've got most of the material taken out. Now we can come in and pair out, and I'm going to get closer and closer to the line until there's just a little bit left, and pair it down right on that line all the way, well, not all the way down, but halfway down, and then flip it over and do the other side. Um, take it time, take your time, do it slowly, don't rush it. Uh, if anything, stay away from the lines as long as possible, and then you can come in and pair it back to the line. If you're a little bit large down inside there, it's not a huge issue as long as your mouth opening is exactly where it needs to be. And so I like to leave it a little bit large inside and then come in and pair out the inside until I get a nice clean surface. And I can check that by putting the chisel in and sliding the chisel around. That lets me know that the mortise is the same width all the way across. And that chisel is the same thickness as my tenon. Here you can see me popping through. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, if you're watching the other video, sorry, the mic died here for some reason. We just didn't check the battery. And now we can take it back over to the tenon and test it back and forth and back and forth and see how it goes. This is a lot of trial and error. In this case, I just needed to clean up the tenon a little bit, thin it out in a few spots until it would wiggle down. And this time it slid in a little bit farther and the next time it slid in a little bit farther. It's all about taking your time and seeing where it's tight and being able to remove material where you need to remove it and not where you don't need to remove it until it slides all the way on and you've got a nice fitting mortise over your tendon. And I'm really happy with that. It's sticking out a lot longer than it needs to because I'm gonna be cutting it off in the future. Now that we have all of the tenons and mortises cut, we can drive them in. And here I'm gonna be putting together the footboard because at this point I don't have the headboard all together, but hopefully we'll have that ready for the next uh, the next video on here and uh, <laughs> I was really happy the first time you actually get to see these come together and it actually fits together the way you're expecting is one of those joyous moments but uh, a lot of fun pound it all down on check it out and we are happy and just in case you're wondering this does have a leather face on it to protect the wood so I don't have any dings or dents from the mallet happy Okay, I wanted to show you guys something here. These are the pins that I'm going to be using for attaching the long stretchers that go between the headboard and the footboard to the headboard and footboard. Normally those would come through the body and you would put in a tusked tenon. But I got these made up from Lone, Lone, Lan? I'm sorry, I'm probably completely butchering your name. He has a video on making these. I'll leave a link to that down below. Uh, but he's actually making these, so if anyone wants to uh, follow along with the plans, you can buy these exact pins. I had a lot of questions on these in the last video, so I thought I would show a little bit about how they'll actually work. Rather than having it come through and then putting in a tusked tenon to hold it in place, which is the common way to do it, I don't want those tusked tenons sticking out um, a decent ways on the footboard and headboard. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna have the tenon coming through, and then this will go through the leg, through the tenon, and into the leg on the other side. The nice thing about this bracket is once it goes in, you can then grab the bracket and pull it out. So for disassembly, this can come loose, and I can still have the tenons coming out just a little bit on the outside. So this will add a little bit of nice taste to it as it'll just be sticking out a little bit and you'll have this nice wrought iron sitting next to the white oak. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this. It'll be a touch that then matches the dresser a little bit from what we did a couple years ago. There you have it. I'm really getting excited about this because you can start to see um, part of the video we're gonna do next time is putting in the arches on all of these hopefully having the headboard assembled and then starting to put in some of the verticals that go in between to separate these. Hopefully next time we're going to get into putting the grooves around, putting in the verticals and cutting all the arches. And once we have that, then we're going to be moving on to putting in the panels and some of the, uh, the headboard details. 
but it's it's starting to be a lot of fun and I'm really looking forward to how this comes together because this thing is massively heavy um, just the way I like it because I like building a lot of massively heavy things. So I will be having plans coming for this on my site. They're not there yet. I'm gonna wait until I'm closer to being done and I know all the dimensions so that I don't have to go back through and revise them. Um, so I'll let you know when those come out. If they are out right now, they'll be down in the description, but I think that's about it for today. I hope you like it. If you did, please hit like, comment, subscribe. That really does help out the channel. That's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. So all that being said, I think it's almost time to put this thing to bed.